everybody, in this video I'm going to be showing you a granny square joining technique. Now this is one that you can use obviously with absolutely any granny squares that you like but I am going to be showing you specifically for the 50-50 granny square variations that we've been doing on the channel recently and I'm going to be demonstrating on these diamond grannies and the tutorial for these is going to be coming very soon. So I've made up just four of these just to make a sample piece so that you can see for the joining technique and I've decided to do it on this particular one so that I can demonstrate how you would join along your traditional granny edge but also along your solid granny edge so I thought that would be a useful one and then you can transfer the skill then to do any of the granny squares that you have or any of them from the pick and mix granny square series. So as you can see on this one, this is one that I have done already and it is an invisible slip stitch join. Now it's only invisible if you're using the same colour that you have on your squares, otherwise obviously you will get a line like you can see here with this pleated um, slip stitch effect. So obviously if you're doing two squares together that are the same colour then your join will be pretty much seamless and invisible and will really make your diamond shapes stand out beautifully. So it's whatever technique you prefer to use you can either join all of your squares along the row and then join your rows together or you can have all of your squares made ready and have them all set up so that you know which order you want to join them and then we can go all the way up one seam for the rows and then you can go all the way along the other seam for the the rows going the other way so it's completely up to you but I'm going to just show you how to go straight up to join two rows together and then straight across to join to the other side so I really hope that this will be useful. So I'm going to move those two out of the way just for a second and I will bring them back when I need them. So you want to start with the slip knot on your hook like I have here and then you want to just put your working end of yarn in between your squares like this because we're going to be pulling it from underneath. So we're just going to start by connecting these two squares together in the chain two corner space. So what we're going to do is go into the back loop. So you can see here we've got our set of three trebles and we've got the tops of those trebles. So we've got one, two, three trebles there and the tops of those trebles. So we want to go into the stitch that is after the top of that final treble and you can see we've got the V there and you want to go into the back loop two of that stitch. So you've got a front loop here and a back loop. So you'll insert your hook through that back loop and make sure that that working end is behind your hook and then you'll find the corresponding stitch on this other side. So obviously we're working up the traditional granny first so if you want the solid then you just have to skip forwards. So now we want to find the corresponding one. So we've got the three trebles and the tops of those three trebles and then this chain here is the corresponding one. So you've got a loop here and a loop here. So again, you want that back loop. So you'll insert your hook through there and then it might seem a little bit fiddly at first and sometimes you do have to give it a little wiggle to get it through but I've now got all of those loops on my hook that I need and now I'm going to I've obviously got my working end around my fingers now and you can see the loops here and you're going to grab that working end and pull it through the first loop like I say you may need to wiggle to get it through the next one and then through the loop that's on the hook as well so that is your very first one done and so now we're going to work into the back loop of each stitch all the way along. So the next one is the top of this treble here. So you can see we've got the top of that stitch here 
and we're going to grab that back loop and again find the corresponding one so it will be the top of this very first treble here and again you will find the back loop so you can see the V there and back loop and then again yarn over pull through all of those loops and that is your second so we'll do that again so a back loop of the next stitch and back loop of the corresponding stitch on the other side yarn over and pull them through and again so we're on the final stitch from the trebles so you'll insert your hook again into that back loop and make sure you always have the working end of yarn behind your hook and then through the back of that final treble on the other side yarn over and pull through all of those loops and now if you remember we have a chain one in between all of our traditional granny clusters so always make sure that you work into that chain one as well you should still be able to easily see the V of the stitch here if I turn that you can see there's the V there and again back loop and back loop on the chain one on the opposite side and again yarn over pull through all those loops and again I'll just do one more with you now so back loop of the next treble so you should have three trebles again now and you will just work in the back loop of each of those so after you've done it for a little bit obviously you will become much more used to the technique and you won't mind having to give it a little wiggle but it's always the back loop of each stitch and then a slip stitch so you're going to continue working that all the way up now so you can see here because I have used the same colour as one of my squares we have got a perfectly seamless join here it's not obvious at all and it is absolutely perfectly flat so it will give the most flush finish to join these beautiful squares together and again it does it on the 50-50 as well even with a variegated yarn so if you continue now working up this edge and I will meet you as you complete your very final stitch into the top of that final treble on each side and we will work the corner space and then we will jump straight across to the next set of squares so always keeping that working end behind your hook until you need it Okay, so I've worked all the way up now and I have just completed the stitch at the top of the final trebles so now we're at the corner space again and in the same way we've obviously got two chains we want to work into the very first one grabbing the back loop only so back loop of that first chain because we're going to use the other one when we come back the other way so you'll complete that final slip stitch and then we're ready to join onto the next squares so just obviously organize them however you want them to be I want them so that they create the diamonds so I've got the granny diamonds together and the solid diamonds together I'm going to chain one just so that it doesn't bunch up the work too much so I've done a chain one and then I'm going to jump straight across and again you can see you've got your two chains in this corner space so one and two they're your two corner chains and we're going to go into the one closest to the set of trebles that we're working vertically up so this one here we're going to leave for when we join the rows and we're going into the back loop again of that one very closest to that set of trebles so back loop 
and again here you've got one, two chains, so you want to go through the back loop of the one closest to your trebles. So again, back loop here. Oh God, just need to move that tail out of the way. So back loop before that treble once again. And then again, you're just going to slip stitch as you did before through all of those. And then again, back loops on all the trebles just as you did before. So it's very simple to join your next set of squares. You will just do a chain one and then jump straight to that very first um, corner chain and do your back loops again. And then you can literally use that technique now to work all the way up for as long as your rows are going to be. And then I will show you in just a minute once I've completed this section, I will show you how to work back across the other way and go across your joins here. And you will get a beautifully seamless flat slip stitch join. And I will also show you the back in just a moment as well and you can see how that looks. So it's up to you, you can either join one granny at a time just on the sides and create really long rows and then stitch your rows together or you can have all of your squares made for your entire blanket and then do it this way that I'm doing here. It is completely up to you what you would prefer to do. But I will meet you in just a second when I have finished but you can see now we have got a nice join along here. So say I've come to the very end of all of the ones I wanted to join, you would simply slip stitch into that final corner chain space and then do a little chain, you would then be able to snip off and pull that through and you can see there we have now got one lovely seamless join all of the way up and like I say you would do that all the way along and then once you've done that, you can turn them around and we'll start working the solid edge now. So in the same way as before, you'll start with a slip knot on your hook and you will lay that working end underneath. Um, you'll need to make sure you do that before you start because obviously you have got a join that goes all the way across so you wouldn't be able to move it once you'd started. So again, you're going to find the chain that is nearest to your trebles going along the way that we're working and you'll grab the back loop on both sides and you can pull the yarn up to work with until you get to that middle bit obviously and you'll just do the same thing so I'm not going to do it really slowly because obviously you'll have been doing this for a while the only thing that you're going to need to know at this point is how to get across that join. But obviously we are doing the solid granny square sides this time. So it is just going to be a case of every single stitch along you will put a slip stitch. So there'll be no chain one stitch for you to work into this time. It will just be in the top of each and every stitch along you will grab the top of the stitch and use that back loop each time for the solid section as well. So yeah, every single stitch long. So if you want to continue that until you get to your final treble and we will work that crossover together. You can see you can pull plenty of yarn up from behind that gap to work with and then we'll t tighten it up obviously when we get there. Obviously the closer you get to that corner space it will get a little bit fiddly because we don't have as much room to work. So I've got just two more to work into now I think. And then you've got that very final treble. And 
And then again we are at our corner space. I'm going to pull that out of the way now and tighten it up. And then your work, you can if you remember we had that final chain on each of the corner spaces to work. So you'll grab the back loop of that first chain from the corner space that we didn't work when we were going the other way. Again, grab that yarn and slip stitch. And now we are at the point where we are, where we've already joined going the other way. And we are simply going to chain one and jump across. It's as simple as that. We've chained one, we're going to jump across and we're going to go straight into the back loop of each of those corner space chains that we left. So again, you can see you've got your trebles and then you should have one chain that you didn't work before. So you will grab the back loop again. Obviously my yarn's going to stand out now because I am on the, oops, I'm going a minute. I didn't have my yarn behind my hook. <laughs> so grab and grab and slip stitch. So obviously the green is really going to stand out now against this beautiful pink. And then you'll be onto your trebles again and you'll be able to grab the back loop of said trebles and work all the way along in exactly the same way. So to jump over it is simply a case of a chain one and then you jump across. <laughs> so it really is that simple and it still is completely flush. I'm going to show you the back as well. So you can see the back is really nice and very beautiful design, even when obviously you've got contrasting colours or if they were all the same, it doesn't really matter. It is a very neat, neat join. So you can continue that now, hopefully, using the tutorial. You can always rewind if you need to or anything like that and watch little bits again so when, maybe when you get back to your traditional again you may want to watch that but it is very simple, very effective, very secure and very beautiful. I think it's probably my favourite granny join. It's no more time consuming really than any of the others but I just really like the completely flat and flush join that you get. Obviously it really stands out against these pink squares which is fine for the tutorial. Obviously I don't mind that in one bit. But when you've used the same colour it is perfectly hidden. So I really really hope that you've enjoyed that tutorial and in whichever way you decide to do it, whether you join your rows first um, individually like I did with these ones here and then go all the way along the top edge. It is absolutely up to you but I really do hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I, as always come and find me on Instagram if you don't already and I will see you for another tutorial very very soon. But bye for now.